Hey guys, welcome you all in T3P. In this quick video, we will talk about the questions related to AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. And in this video, we will go through the new questions with their explanation. Also, I'll cover a few concepts there and I'll share. Uh, you can use this video as a cheat sheet and I'll share the tricks how you can identify the correct answer inside the video. So, without wasting time, let's start. So let's talk about this question. In this question, they are asking which of the following is a method of backup available in the AWS cloud. So we are looking for a method where we can keep our backup. So the option we are having, Amazon EVS snapshots. Next option we are having available availability zones. Uh, third one, Amazon EFS file systems. Uh, fourth one is Amazon root 53. So before giving it the right answer, let's understand what exactly these services are. So first we are having Amazon EVS snapshot. EVS stands for Elastic Block Storage. So it's a block based storage system that provides a virtual hard disk inside the cloud. If I will talk about the availability zone, availability zone is a kind of a logical location inside the region where the availability zone consists of one or more physical data centers like our organization's office we are having, right? Next we are having Amazon EFS file system that provides file based storage service which we can access through the nfs protocol as far as i know we can use it uh, as a storage service but not as a backup service so it's not correct amazon root 53 it's a dns service in aws so here we are not talking about the mapping of name to ip address or uh, ip address to name so we can't use it so this is also wrong availability zone yes it is used for high availability and fault alerts but not for as a backup service but e amazon evs snapshot we can use it as a backup service because it's provide virtual hard disk in the cloud so our choice for this question will be amazon evs snapshot let's talk about next question now what is the term for describing action of automatically running script on amazon ec2 instances when launched to install software so the option we are having containerization, golden images, backflow automation, bootstrapping. So let's understand one by one. If I talk about the containerization, it's a process where we convert our application in the form of containers. Then we can launch it through the, we can create these containers through Docker contain, uh, Docker or other container runtime like CRT and we are having others containerization platform or we can say the tools. Next we are having golden images. Uh, golden images are the snapshots of any pre-configured EVS volume that can be launched to launch new instances. If I talk about the workflow automation, it is a, it's actually a process of we can say the orchestrating automated actions. So this is associated with service such as SAP or Puppet if you heard about it or in AWS it is known as AWS Ops work. So that is known as a workflow automation. Bootstrapping. Yes, bootstrapping is the execution of automated actions to the service like uh, EC2 or any RDS we are having. So the thing is uh, here they are asking, describing the action of automatically running a script on a Amazon EC2 instance when launched to install software. So here our choice will be bootstrapping because we are not looking for containerization. We are not looking for the stuff sorts. We are not looking for any workflow automation like uh, uh, AWS Ops work do. So here we are looking the service which can help us to automatically run our script when any instance is launched. So here we will go with bootstrap. Let's talk about next question now. Let's talk about this question. In this question they are asking which AWS service or feature helps restrict the AWS service resources and individual API access the user and roles in each member account can access. So the option we are having Amazon Cognito, AWS Seal, AWS Firewall Manager, AWS organization. So let's understand one by one. First, to we talk about the Amazon Cognito. Uh, actually, this service is used for providing your sign up, sign in, and sign up services for your mobile application. Next, we are having AWS Seal service. That is the service which is security service for protecting against the DDoS attacks, like we are having uh, distributed denial of service attacks we are having on our web application or any resource. So it will stop responding to actual users response uh, requests. So the thing is it is used to protect DDoS attacks. 
Next service we are having AWS Firewall Manager. That is the service which is used for managing various security services in AWS. And the last service we are having AWS Organizations. AWS Organizations actually help us to centrally manage and govern our environment as we grow and scale our AWS resources. It uses uh, pro it uses programmatically. We can create new AWS accounts and allocate resources group accounts to organize our workflow. So there are many advantages or we can say the benefits of using AWS organizations. Actually, it helps us quickly scale our environment, applies policies that give our teams the freedom to build with the resources they need. There are other benefits as well. So here we are looking for the service which can help us to restrict the AWS service resources and individual API access. So that I can see only can be done by AWS organization. If we will, uh, as we discussed, Cognito is only for providing some sign in sign up services for mobile applications. So it's not correct. It is used AWS seed services for uh, protecting from DDoS attacks. So it is not looking in the question. And the firewall manager is for the managing security related services in um, AWS. So our answer will be AWS organizations for this question. Let's talk about next question now. Let's talk about this question. In this question, they're asking which AWS service should be used to create a billing alarm. That is very important because every cloud provider asks this question in their foundation exam. So this is one of the important questions. So let's understand the options we are having. AWS Trusted Advisor, AWS Cloud Trail, AWS CloudWatch, Amazon, QuickSight. So if we talk about the AWS Trusted Advisors, it's an online tool that provides us real-time guidance how we can help uh, our infrastructure or how we can provision our resources with the following best practices which is provided by AWS. So it's an advisor service. Next service we are having. AWS CloudTrail. AWS CloudTrail actually locks the API's activity, whatever actions need to be, um, whatever actions taken by API, it records or we can say the locks those activities. Um, and we can't use it for any performance or billing metrics. Next service we are having Amazon CloudWatch. Amazon CloudWatch is actually a monitoring and uh, observability service which provide us the data and actionable insights to monitor our application. Also, it collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics, and events. So the thing is, this service can be used for billing purpose. Last service we are having, Amazon QuickSight. Amazon QuickSight is actually a cloud-powered BI service, business intelligence service, we can say, that make it makes easy to deliver insights to everyone in our organization. So it's mainly for representation purpose. So it's not correct. If I'll talk about the advisor service trusted, that is also not correct. Cloud trail is not correct because it just locks the API's activities. So it's not correct. CloudWatch is the correct service which can create a billing alarm because it monitors and collects the metrics which help us to generate the billing and it will send the alarm to us. So this is correct choice for this question. Let's see what we have next. 